just the facts, ma'am. Why are you here? Let me guess. You want to know what great movies you must see before you die. And since I am Bravo Von Mula, a connoisseur of fine art, you can bet your bottom dollar that if I'm reviewing a movie, it's a good one, and feel free to go watch it. So now that you know why you're here, let's talk about the movie Pulp Fiction, a postmodern circular crossword puzzle masterpiece. Yes, this 1994 crime movie set in Los Angeles is considered a postmodern masterpiece selected for preservation for the ages. And right from the opening scene, when Amanda Plummer goes ballistic, you know, right from the get-go, this ain't gonna be your father's run-of-the-mill kind of crime story. Oh, hell no. Well, two years before Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino wrote the masterpiece True Romance. You remember that movie. It had the Sicilian scene in there where two movie legends lock horns in a battle to the death. I'm talking about Christopher Watkins versus Dennis Hopper in the, oh, so you're a Sicilian, huh? Remember that scene? And that was a home run. He hit a home run there and he took off like a meteor. Well, he incorporated some of those ideas from the true romance movie. He incorporated those ideas into this movie, Pulp Fiction. So the bottom line is Quentin Tarantino had a good 10-year run before going soft. And uh, there's quite a f- this this movie had an all-star cast. I mean, they had John Travolta, Samuel Jackson, Uma Thurman, Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Amanda Plummer, Ving Rhames, Rosanna Arquette, Bruce Willis, and Christopher Watkins. And I can imagine the 30-year-old Tarantino had a little pressure on him to hit a hit that buzzer shot. And he did hit the buzzer shot. He went swish, all net. This is a classic movie. Now, Quentin had to go back and channel some of the old classics. Remember this scene here? The glowing box. You see, to make a movie as good as Pulp Fiction, Tarantino had to remake film noir magic. He would be influenced by classic pieces like this from Kiss Me Deadly, the 1955 movie, and The Glowing Box. He was also inspired by Orson Welles' masterpiece. Remember our review on that movie, A Touch of Evil? Marlene Dietrich? Look at her here with her black wig on. Normally she was a blonde. Now you see the influences. Uh, Uma Thurman. Let's see some of the similarities here. Uma Thurman, black wig, smoking, blowing a smoke out, those big beautiful eyes. Were they trying to capture the moment? Yes. What a great moment here. The bottom line is, yes, Quentin Tarantino is influenced by the classic pieces of film noir, but he's driven by his true romance, renaissance of awakening. He's mixing his own genius with the genius of yesterday. So let's go ahead and go through the movie, pick out some of the good scenes. I'm going to tell you why. Pulp Fiction deserves to be in the same category as the great ones. Now in this scene here, John Travolta's character, Vincent Vega, is talking to Jules, which is Samuel Jackson's characters, and they're talking about the differences between Amsterdam and America, like the quarter pounder with cheese, it's called the Royale with cheese. It's a pretty good scene here. I believe that Tarantino picked up on some of these lines when he was staying in Amsterdam. And remember earlier we were talking about the movie uh, Kiss Me Deadly, 1955. There she is, glowing box. Um, Well, we have a similar scene. And we never find out what's glowing in the briefcase. But it's all part of the plot. Very twisted. Now, in this scene here, you got... 
Samuel Jackson is about ready to tear into this young kid with Ezekiel 25:17, a Bible verse rant. As soon as Vincent Vega there hears the, the Bible rant coming, he reaches into his coat to get his gun because he knows this is not going to end well for the young guy, and it does not. Now, in the next scene, we find out that the scenes are not in chronological order. It goes back and forth, and it follows three intertangled stories all coming together in some glorious fashion. And there holds the mystery of the magic coming full circle. Like I said before, like a circular crossword puzzle if there is such an animal. Now in this scene, Bruce Willis just got done talking to the boss, Marcellus, who told him to work through that pride issue because he's going to throw a fight. He said, work through that shit. And as the character, as Bruce Willis's character is about ready to walk away, his name is Butch. As Butch is ready to walk out the bar, he is confronted by Vincent Vega, and they take an immediate dislike to each other. And then it gets a little interesting when Marcellus asks Vincent to take his wife out and show her a good time while he's going to Florida. What could possibly go wrong when you take your mobster boss's wife out for a good time and she mistakes your high-grade heroin for coke and takes a snort and, well, dies on your ass? <laughs> Thank God for a shot of adrenaline in the heart and you might just live to see tomorrow where you will get to watch Christopher Watkins' brilliant cameo performance as Captain Coons telling the young butch how hard it was to get that gold watch back from Vietnam. Unfortunately, Butch's girlfriend did not realize how important the watch was and she forgot it in the apartment, which makes Butch so angry that he goes back to the apartment and risks his life only to run in to Marcellus. And from there, it gets pretty ugly. And when I mean ugly... I'm talking medieval hillbilly ug ugly. Yeah, you might want to skip this part. So there's some pitch black humor in this postmodern work of art in a way that only a sick, demented, lost soul could put together. The bottom line is you probably got to be hungry to make a film like this. And unfortunately for us movie buffs, today Tarantino has fallen for the honey traps. And he has a new world order handler. So don't expect another masterpiece from Tarantino until he bottoms out and they steal all his money and he's forced to dig deeper. So I'll leave you with the Bonnie situation. Yes, they called in Mr. Wolf because Vincent said, well, man, I think I shot Marvin in the face. And it's shit like this that's going to bring this situation to a head. God damn, Jimmy, that's some serious gourmet shit talking about the coffee. You sending the wolf? Well, why didn't you say so? And now we've come full circle. Right back to the restaurant with old Honey Bunny. So I give this movie 9 out of 10 Bravo because it's like a circular crossword puzzle on film. I tell you, it's great. Oh, in the briefcase, well... Kiss me deadly.